Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Exploring the Homestead. Um, it's a sunshiny day at the moment, but we are going between intermittent clouds and uh, a little bit of a breeze. So we're going to fight the breeze a little bit. The last few videos have been that way, and you've noticed, and I've noticed, and it bothers me. <laughs> anyway, we'll do what we can. But I think today my goal is berries. Um, I, I want to go around and see what berries are do or you know are coming along and uh, we'll take a look at them just check on things with me how does that sound <laughs> the wild elderberry are everywhere here now I just call them wild elderberry I know that uh, there are a few different varieties of wild elderberry and uh, I've identified them once and I at this very moment don't remember which ones they are This is one that I'm really excited about, and it's growing everywhere. This particular variety is red huckleberry, but there are huckleberries all over, and some wild blueberries. This particular bush has a lot on them. I'm amazed at how many ripe ones are here. Um, Last year, when I was watching them, it seemed like they were on all year. They just kept flowering and um, ripening. And I'm doubting myself this year that I actually saw that. I know that I saw the berries linger even into the winter, but I don't know if they ripened during that whole time. Mm. They're really good. They're, they're kind of sour right now, so I'm not sure that they were all the way ripe. But they taste amazing. <laughs> Um, when we first moved in, I was afraid to eat them. Um, I grew up knowing that red was a sign of danger. I don't know if it's actually true. And white berries. <laughs> so we always were cautious about any red or white berry. As a child, that, that's what my parents had always told me. My aunts and uncles too. And uh, it's, not, it's not really true. We eat a lot of red fruit. But I think it was a good way to keep us safe from what was actually poisonous in the area. Of course, found out uh, that uh, those red huckleberries are, in fact, red huckleberry. And I'm glad that I figured it out. So yummy. So tasty. We'll have to... They're little small guys, too. So it'll take a lot to make anything out of it. We'll kind of have to wander all over to pick enough. But, you know, judging by that bush, I better get on it. Those look really ripe and ready to go. The flowers are out and happy. <laughs> I feel like I live in a very beautiful place. It's just gorgeous here. And it's nice that it's pretty all year round. Now there's a lot of foliage behind me, but most of this is thimbleberry and some of it is salmonberry and then in the back there's Himalayan blackberry. Now these are all growing natural here. <laughs> They're a, a weed actually. <laughs> but uh, I would like a berry weed. That doesn't bother me one bit. The young thimbleberry leaf actually makes a really good tea and I collected a bunch earlier this year when they first started emerging in the spring mm. and they taste really cool they've got a really unique flavor now of course I'm not used to like eating them and swallowing them I don't think it doesn't fit right to me I don't really like it but uh, the flavor is amazing and the tea is really good it's a really good stomach calming tea and it's just a wonderful flavor. <laughs> if 
Here's a few ripe salmon berry. This one's just a little bit past ripe. You have to taste them carefully when they're a little past ripe. <laughs> Things get moldy around here really fast. A lot of molds and mildews and slimes and stuff that grow. Perfect conditions for growing all of that. The salmon berry are out full flush right now. This is their happy time. Here's another batch. They're, they're all just getting a little bit past ripe. They, uh, they look really pretty, but they're very bland when it comes to uh, flavor. Every once in a while you get one that's just amazing. But uh, if any of you have eaten a lot of berries, you'll know um, raspberries are really wow. They've got a lot of flavor, a lot of sweetness to them, a good amount of kick. Blackberries are working their way down the scale. These are below blackberries. So they taste good, especially after a long winter of no fresh fruit. They're the first berries that are really plump and juicy around here. And they're yummy, yummy. Uh-oh, guys. We are lucky. This is the first thimbleberry that is ripe. I didn't expect to see a ripe one yet. <laughs> Looking out across here and there are a few that seem to be ripe or close. These ones are going to be ripe in the next few days. You always have to check thimbleberries closely because the bugs find them really fast. Mmm. Thimbleberries are really quite intriguing to me. <laughs> I'm finding other ripe ones. They have they have an amazing flavor. They are really close to raspberry in flavor. Um very, very good. Maybe leaning a little bit to it towards a cherry. Um, I don't think that's accurate. They have a lot of seeds. The seeds are kind of shaped like a, um, a strawberry seed. Mm. Checking for bugs again. And they crunch a lot, so it's kind of a seedy experience, but the flavor is so good. Let's see if I can pick this and hold the camera at the same time. Oops. Yeah, that was a perfect example there. They're not very plump and there's not necessarily a lot of flesh, but the flesh that is there is very, just very rich in flavor. And you can see the seeds. Definitely a seedy, seedy berry. Man, I was surprised to find one and there are a lot. There are a lot, a lot. Jackpot. Mm. I was reading in a book that uh, the native of this area, the native people, indigenous people of this area, used to pick these and dry them and then carry them in their pouch. It was some of the first really good vitamin C and other vitamins that would come this time of year. <laughs> I really enjoy walking down this hill. You can see that I'm just buried in these 
native berries. <laughs> um, the thimbleberry are actually really hard to pick and, and preserve. That's why they're usually a trailside snack. It would be really difficult to get them in any high quality or quantity uh, processed in, in really any way. So they just get to be eaten and enjoyed and loved. I, I really love those. They're really, really good. I need to show you these salmon berries as well. Salmon berries can be that orange color, but they can also be a very deep red. They're, they're really beautiful and they're deceptive because they look like they should be extremely flavorful, like a raspberry. <laughs> and uh, they're relatively bland. Uh, they're not extremely sour. They're not extremely sweet. They're just mildly bland. So <laughs> they're really good though, in their own sense. Just like I said, I, they were a, a happy thing to see at the beginning of, of the season. Lots and lots of berry bushes. I found something else that I wasn't expecting to find. And just picking it tells me that it's not quite ripe. Oh, but it is just, just a little on the sour side. These are more exciting than the thimbleberry. These, there are many different varieties of blackberries, but these are the small natives and they are the sweetest blackberry that grow on our property that I've found yet. They just grow a little tiny. These ones aren't the happiest because they're off of a little plant, but they just have such rich flavor. They're so good. Mm, that one was a good one. Oh, it's been a long time since I've had these. gonna have to bring Audrey and the kids up here and have some. There aren't a lot yet and they come in a really short season. I wonder if I can get a better picture of a plant. That plant I was picking off of was small and it's probably feeling a little stressed because we've had a lot less rain all of a sudden and a few hot days so it probably put a lot of energy into making those fruit. Um, but we I need to bring the kids up here and Audrey up here and Share some of those yummy, yummy fruit. All right, I found some of the plants. So behind me here are a mix of the, those native blackberries and other things. And these plants are in the shade a little bit, so they've, they've had a lot more vigor. Um, I don't really see any fruit or any signs of fruit on these particular vines. Oh, there's actually some fruiting going on there. Now, are, am I 100% sure that this is the same variety of blackberry? No. Uh, just put my hand here for size comparison. The vines are really small, so are the leaves. The Oh man, the thorns are still quite sharp and they still get you, but nothing like the Himalayan blackberry. But what I do know, uh, even though I'm not absolutely sure that the variety I just ate is the exact same as this other small variety, they are both small varieties and they both taste fantastic. Get out of the way for the wind here. 
Here's a big gust of wind. Hopefully it doesn't sound too bad over the microphone. <laughs> I, there, there went Ivy chasing it. Chasing the wind. Wrong direction. <laughs> I love being outside. <laughs> so all these different berries that I'm finding, blackberry, huckleberry, salmonberry, thimbleberry, and many that I, I'm yet to find, you know, those are the reasons why I'm having um, a really difficult time, or part of the reason why I'm having a different, difficult time just renting a big bulldozer and clearing a big swath of land. Um, I really want to get to know everything for a, a few cycles, you know, before I just doze everything down. <clears throat> They're all over this tree. This is a good year for huckleberries. Mm. Those are so good. I wonder if they'll be here this weekend and I can make some gems and jelly. Mm. So I, I feel like to connect with the ground and preserve what's here, I, I need to tread gently and softly. Sure, I could just plow out a big section and plant some crop that everybody likes. I don't know, goji berries. <laughs> and, and try to make a lot of money off of it. Um, but it's not my style. And there's a little bit of give and take, and I'm going to have to do some of that anyway. But I'm going to do it as slowly as possible. Maybe I can cook up a few batches of uh, the huckleberry, the red huckleberry, and uh, somebody out there will buy some and um, I can make a little money that way. Make ends meet. <laughs> Ooh, here's a good spot. Here's a good spot right over here. <laughs> so what we have behind me are what I've been introduced to to as Himalayan blackberry. Now this is where things get a little fuzzy and people that actually know will correct me. I see two different varieties of blackberry leaf, uh, two different leaf styles, which tells me that it's two different varieties. And at first I was just going off the cane. I, uh, I am wrong um, to assume one over the other. So this is the one variety Right now it's in bloom and there is a ton of bee food all over this tree. <laughs> growing, growing up the sides of these trees here. Um, they have a very large cane. Uh, this camera's not get, doing it justice and plus this cane isn't very thick at this point. Um, and then the, the thorns are just gigantic. The leaves can grow quite large. Now this is the other variety. The cane, as you can see, is similar, um, though it seems to turn a little more red, but it can grow a tremendous amount every day, <laughs> just like the other one. And though the pattern on the leaf is very different. Um, so which one's which? Uh, I'm still learning. <laughs> Well, whoops, my uh, little action cam ran out of memory because uh, some guy forgot to clear the memory before we started the video. So I guess I get a finish with my big camera and uh, I'll see if I can finish quickly because uh, I can't hold it out away from me for very long because it gets too heavy. <laughs> so it doesn't work for me. Um, during the main blackberry crop, um, 
my family and I often just take a hike down the, the road and pick blackberries. It's almost uh, every other day thing. Um, it's, it's really kind of a fun thing too. Blackberries are really common in this area. They're a weed. The Himalayan ones I think are a noxious weed, but I, I have to double check that. And uh, um, it, it's actually really fun to, to use it. Uh, this year we're planning on preserving a lot of blackberries and it'll be a good, good thing. <laughs> we're going to really build up our food storage. We need it. We really want to eat our own food now as much as possible. All right, speaking of berries, here's a fun sign. <laughs> I saw a really funny joke the other day, or heard a funny joke, whatever. I read it. That's why I saw it. <laughs> they were saying that uh, in bear country you can wear bells and carry pepper spray just in case there's an aggressive bear. Um, Black bears, bears are less aggressive than the grizzly bears, and the way you can tell um, the scat apart is that black bears have scat that have a lot of seeds in it, like berry seeds and so on, and the grizzly bear scat smells of pepper spray and has little bells on it, <laughs> or in it, so uh, I always thought that was funny. Um, we've got a few black bear that live around here, but we've never seen them. Ivy is uh, noisy enough that they don't ever come around. They don't care to come close by. And the part of me that loves nature uh, is sad. I want to see the black bear and it's really easy for them to hide. The part of me who's a dad with little children, I'm glad that I have Ivy around. <laughs> so. More of the blackberry here. A lot of yummy food for the bees coming anytime. An example of how these blackberries can climb. That blackberry goes clear up the tree. Not clear to the very, very top of the tree, but that's a good 15 to 20 feet. Again, it's the blackberry that I called the Himalayan blackberry and they are very impressive to me. Very, very impressive. Um, I just got the text from Audrey calling me home for dinner. So time to go eat some lunch with the kids and Audrey and uh, work on ending this video. If anybody's curious, we're having corn dogs and tater tots. Uh, yes, I have two young children. <laughs> so sometimes mom and dad get to lose the dice roll on on what we get for dinner. <laughs> Corn dogs aren't too bad, right? Anyway, guys, uh, I'll wrap up this video. Thanks for watching another Exploring the Homestead and getting a taste of the berries that we have growing around here. Um, really enjoy living here, can you tell? <laughs> really, guys, thanks for watching and thanks for following me and thanks for taking this journey with me on Simple Ground.